Thank you. And it's a pleasure to be speaking with all of you today. What an amazing group. I'm overwhelmed. Today I'd like to address the lack of physical activity among America's students as a major public education issue. According to the CDC, the percentage of children affected by obesity today is more than tripled since the 1970s. These changes are due to an increase in poor nutrition and sedentary lifestyles. Preteens today average six hours a day on screens, and that does not include use in schools. The evidence that has been accumulated through studies over the past two decades has shown that higher levels of physical activity in children is related to increases in cognitive function and academic performance, while more sedentary behavior exerts the opposite effect. My colleagues and I at Kingfield Elementary School have used a comprehensive approach addressing nutrition and physical activity involving parents and other community members to help solve this problem. We have incorporated physical activity into our days to improve school culture, student health, and academic performance. Our ski skate program is a great example. Since 1988, I've advocated for and supported this ski skate program in our district, first as a parent volunteer and then becoming a program coordinator. Our students travel to Sugarloaf one afternoon a week in January and February. This collaboration between the resort and district schools has grown to include alpine skiing, Nordic skiing, snowboarding, ice skating, and snowshoeing. Studies indicate that cognitive functioning, motivation, goal setting, and self-control are fostered by engaging in sports. Nevertheless, we've faced many challenges keeping this program going. It was almost canceled in the wave of No Child Left Behind and all the demands of high stakes testing. I've been an active voice with the school board and administrators, and currently 100 plus students in grades one through eight participate each year in the program. Each week I collaborate with 20 teacher and parent chaperones, along with Sugarloaf employees to promote safety and appropriate challenge on the hill. We're lucky to have a skiing culture in our community where many are willing to give their time to connect with students and share their passion for winter sports. Because we strive to get kids outside in all kinds of weather, our school has purchased weather, winter sports equipment through winter kids and community donations. On any day in the winter, students are out with PE classes or teachers, tubing on a small hill by the soccer field, or snowshoeing or Nordic skiing across the playground. According to Timothy Walker in his 2017 book, Teach Like Finland, this practice of getting into the wild improves the time children spend in the classroom on academic pursuits and builds collaboration between and within the classrooms. It can also help children make better behavior choices. We've observed all of these benefits in our children, and over the past three years, we recorded a decrease in office visits due to aggressive behavior. Another great example is my Wildcat Kid Power Team. In 2018, my son Matt started working for the United Nations Children's Fund, and I started researching how I could connect his work with my classroom. I found UNICEF USA's Kid Power Program. This initiative combines student activity with corporate giving. A team is created on the website which offers brain breaks called Power Ups. These are short, vigorous activity breaks that promote achievement by increasing attention and memory. Points are awarded for each video completed. After completing 10 videos, the team contributes one ready-to-use therapeutic food packet, or RUTF, to children in need. 150 of these RUTFs can save the life of a child. We began completing power-ups whenever I noticed a lack of focus during instructional time. Following the power-ups, I observed an increase in attention on instructional tasks. To make a greater impact, I've successfully completed donation donors choose grants to purchase UNICEF power bands for my student. These are fitness bands for kids that track daily steps. 2,500 steps equals one PowerPoint when they buzz. 10 PowerPoints are in one RUTF packet. Each week, we sync our power bands and enthusiastically count together the number of RUTFs that we've earned. This is great counting and recording practice for first graders that need to meet the standard of reading and writing numbers to 120. In our initial year, the first graders and I invited the kindergarten class to join us. 
we began a journey in integrating reading, writing, mathematics, and the social studies standard, exploring concepts and processes from geography to understand issues involving people, places, and environments in our community, Maine, the United States, and the world. Together, we earned enough RUTF packets to save the lives of five children. I also partnered with the PE teacher in the 100 Mile Club. This incentive awards students for each landmark of 25 miles walked. When they reach 100 miles, they earn a t-shirt. These awards recognize students during monthly assemblies and became an incentive for remaining physically active throughout the year. Some of my students walked, ran, and danced over 300 miles. 100% of this first grade class met or exceeded their growth targets for mathematics on standardized testing in spring 2019. 91% met or exceeded their growth targets for reading. This was a significant increase from the scores of previous classes. In 2019, I expanded our Kid Power program by inviting the 8th grade social studies class to meet with us bi-weekly. With the older students as mentors, the social studies teacher and I introduced the students to learning more about world geography and the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals. We organized a series of place-based walking trips in Kingfield to learn more about our communities and projects we could initiate to help. In November, we addressed food insecurity through a food drive that collected 800 items for distribution through local food pantries. Student planning and collaboration between these classes was observed to have a positive effect on behavior and learning in both age groups. In 2019, I also became a member of KES's green team. Through this initiative, we were able to plan future projects for environmental studies, health, and wellness. In 2020, we will begin a composting project, do further work on our nature trail, and build a pavilion for use as an outdoor classroom space. These goals will allow for additional planning for active outside curriculum integration and help keep our students engaged and healthy. In conclusion, a lack of physical activity is an issue that has been widely recognized in the past decades. My life's work as a teacher has included a conscious effort to include activities that foster creative play and social connectedness, while teaching children how to cope with stress through mindfulness, and always involving regular, vigorous exercise. For 30 years, I've taken my passion for the outdoors, exercise, and healthy living to increase student achievement and promote lifelong healthy habits. My hope is that my work will serve as an exemplar for future educators as we continue to work at solving this very important public education issue. Thank you.